from doing videos, I've definitely seen diva behavior in it, do you know what I mean? I think success and fame bring, and money brings out who you really are. You've probably seen recently the, I've seen like Mike GLC going at Link Up over. Is there anyone in particular that you're seeing in the industry now that you feel has got the potential? A lot more money got injected into the scene. And we're live, so Eric, it's good to have you here. Good, um, good to be here, bro. Yeah, like I just said before we started, first time I've seen you, I think, in person since 2012 yeah. in New York, of all places, right? No, crazy. <laughs> so look, you've sort of become, you already was when I first met you, but you've become like a key part of the sort of video side of the music industry. You've worked with everyone, right? First thing I was, I'd like to ask you is, What's been the difference in the transition over the past 10 years? Because even though he's working on some pretty big stuff 10 years ago, it seems to have just, you're all over the world. So what's changed over the, that time? Um, I think what's changed is, you mean personally, what's changed for me or? Like for you and the business, wise? like personally yourself and the business. I think I'd, I've got a lot more direction now, um, no pun intended. But like before I was kind of just doing literally everything, do you know what I mean? Um, producing, writing our, our own scripts, was I was doing camera work, I was directing, do you know what I mean? But now, like, I'm more focused on what I want to do and what type of jobs I want to take on, do you know what I mean? So it's a, it's a lot more um, focused as opposed to just doing loads of things, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I can imagine. So with the preparation, because, you know, you've worked behind the camera, directed, um, how much preparation goes into some of these videos? Because like I said before, like even like the Fireboy and Ed Sheeran video, you got, looks like a lot of people, just a lot of stuff going on. And I also seen a few of the other ones that, you know, where the amount of transitions and different locations involved to sort of get a vision of how to put all that together. Because I, I can imagine that being hard. How much preparation goes actually into, yeah, planning for the video and then post um, filming. Yeah, so, so just to be clear, the Fireboy and Ed Sheeran video was produced by my company. I didn't actually film that one because I was in, I was out of the country at the time. <laughs> um, but I did do another big shoot this year, which was Ed Sheeran featuring, not sorry, Ed Sheeran, um, Clean Bandit featuring um, A7S. And that was a three day, that was a three day shoot that took like two, two and a half months to plan, do you know what I mean? So obviously props to my wife who produces all our videos. Um, I don't really focus too much on that side, but in regards to like preparation, bro, it's loads of phone calls, meetings, hour long meetings with like all the different like head of departments, you know what I mean? Just to make sure that when we do get there on the day, everything is running smooth, you feel me? Because literally one thing, wardrobe, um, don't know, the camera department, just one thing can throw the whole shoot off, so. Yeah, there's a lot of prep just to make sure, because when like thousands of pounds are going into something, you got to make sure yeah. when you've got your chance to shoot on a day, you lot are making it. Yeah, uh, and, and some of these artists or whoever's putting the budget together for these videos, yeah. whether it's a label, artist, or whatever, how often, so how close can you usually get to that budget? Do you feel like some people are like a bit unrealistic or I understand we want to get everything we can, right? But yeah, yeah. How close can you usually get to it or does things crop up quite often? Um, I would say like normally it's always over than in the, the client initially comes to us with, do you know what I mean? So for instance, someone would come and say, oh, I got 20K for a shoot. Um, but I want to do this or do this or I've got this idea or they think they ask us to come up with a treatment um, and then we come up with a treatment which they really love and they get really attached to the idea and but to actually make that happen might cost another 5k or another 7k do you know what I mean um, so a lot of the times it does it does creep over uh, obviously the job of the producers to try and stick within that budget as much as possible but sometimes you know what I mean the idea drives it yeah. a bit higher than, than anticipated. And when it comes to sort of actually like getting work, like, you know, I remember like you, even 10 years ago, you were super busy, right? And yeah. I remember when we went to New York, we did a sort of collaboration with an American artist, UK artist, right? Yeah. And now I've seen since you've, even before that, I'm not sure if you did, but I know that you've been working with a lot of American artists too. I think like Young MA, Red Cafe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, like 
first and foremost, how did that sort of come about? And what's the difference in working with American to UK artists? Um, so the Young and May and Red Cafe collab came about. So I was in Dubai shooting a video for a group out there. I flew out there with my boy A.O. Beats. Um, he was in a collaboration with a Dubai-based group. Mm -hmm. So we shot the video and then they brought me back to shoot the remix, which featured Chip and Red Cafe. So we kind of got talking, we built a relationship. Um, and then he had this song with Kojo Funds and Young MA. Mm -hmm. So he was like, yeah, I want to come to London and shoot it. So I was like, yeah, we put wheels into motion, uh, made it happen. But I think the difference is with the Americans, as opposed to here, they're a lot more direct and it's very like, they, they understand the business a lot more, do you know what I mean? So they know that money is the yeah. difference, is the bridge between what they want and where they are, do you get what I'm saying? So um, that relationship is a lot easier. I from, from the, the clients I've worked with, um, Whereas I feel like with the UK artists, not not all of them, mm -hmm. but with some of the UK artists, especially in our scene as well, like it's very, there's a lot of back and forth when it comes to like getting things done yeah. because it's like we got high expectations and sometimes the budget is not really matching your expectations. You know what I mean? So um, there's a lot of humbling that <laughs> I need I can, to do. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> especially with like the, the sort of, the channels like Link Up, Grime Daily, etc. Yeah. I remember, like, obviously, this is going back over ten years now. But when they used to do the hood videos, and it was like yeah. two fifty, three hundred quid, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, it was like done quick. Yeah. But it's crazy to see the scene, like over the past like five to ten years, go from like super super low budget yeah. to now to like real good videos of huge budgets. You know, you see yeah. some of these videos now and you can see a lot of time and effort like the ones you're doing as well. Yeah. Um, wh when did you see in the game over the last 10 years that clicked? Was it when labels got involved? Or, yeah, yeah? I, think, I think a lot more money got injected into the scene, into our scene, do you know what I mean? And um, that reflected in everything from the jewelry and cars that men, men are wearing, the men are driving mm -hmm. to the the, the production of their, their music, I feel like the production got better because um, people could afford better producers and better studios and et cetera, et cetera. And obviously that also reflected with the quality of videos. Um, and also like, I feel like technology has gotten better as well in terms of cameras and whatever. So there's a lot more self shooters who can afford to give you a certain type of quality mm. without having to like go crazy with the, with the budget, you feel me? Um, I feel like I was kind of, I, I got in at the start of that with the Canons and yeah. um, whereas the, the generation before me were using like big, like Sony Z1s. Yeah, like and big red cams. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, so the red cams was part of that generation yeah. where I came in. Yeah. So um, before, like if you wanted a good, big budget video, you have to get a red cam or Ari. And I feel like now you can get a very decent quality with like a Sony or the Black Magic, you know what I mean? So I feel like that played a huge part as well. So it kind of, it looked like the quality was getting better. Oh, sorry, it looked like the budgets were getting better, but really the the quality was a lot more accessible, I think. And with the, the, the cameras, mm. you know, I remember like the sort of, the, I think it was like the 7D back in the day. Yeah, the kind That of was 70. like the one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, with yourself now, what do you prefer to shoot on? Do you prefer to shoot on like the sort of DSLRs or do you prefer like the big, the big cams? Because you do some of like, the bigger budget videos. So like, what, what, what are you seeing on set that people are using or yourself? To be honest, I, I think the, the more years I've spent doing this, the less attached to gear I am. I think it's more about the story you're trying to tell and um, as opposed to kind of how it looks. And I think everyone needs to just find a, a tool that they're comfortable with, mm -hmm. do you get what I mean? And a tool that actually is right for the job. So there's big budget shoots where I'd use like a Sony A7S or something. Um, and then I could use a, a Ari, but my, my tool of choice is an Ari Alexa, just because it's got all the right tools and professional tools that I need on set. Um, it makes everyone work quicker. And obviously the 
the, the sensor and the image you gave and the skin tones and all these things. Mm. I don't want to bore you with all that yeah, information. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but there will be someone that finds that yeah, this, yeah. this useful. Um, so yeah, I would just say, just focus on what you're trying to do and, and pick the tool, the right tool for the job, basically. And, and back to the, the platforms like LinkUp, Grime Daily, SPTV and all the others yeah. that are sort of emerged off the back of those. Yeah. Is there any that like, you work with directly um, where, you know, maybe referrals get passed on for the ones that want bigger budget or are they keeping a lot of their stuff in-house these days? Um, I think all the, the big, like, what would you call them, platforms, mm-hmm. uh, music platforms are pretty self-sufficient now. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in the earlier days they were very, they used to outsource a lot. They used to outsource a lot of their editors, their cameramen, directors, etc., etc. Um, but I think now they all they've all got their own teams, their own editors, their own. Um, to be fair, when I first started, when I started Nang TV, it was I think I started like a few months after Link Up, mm. and I remember Ade ringing me like literally, maybe like three months after I started shooting videos, and he was like, "Ah, oh, do you want to join Link Up?" But because I was so like dedicated to growing my own platform, I turned down like Jamal, rest his soul. I turned down um, um, Link Up because I wanted to build my own thing, do you know what I mean? So if you want to go compare that to now, I feel like they've all got their own teams now rather than mm. outsourcing. I think if you have something special, if you're a really sick editor, they'll they'll bring you on board to try and enhance their look and stuff. Um, but now, like, I don't, I, I don't really, I don't really work with um, a lot of platforms, to be fair. I think my clientele has kind of shifted. I'm doing more like documentaries, more short films, um, so yeah, that doesn't really suit what they're trying to do. Yeah. But I'm always open to building and doing something substantial. Yeah, so you made a, good, a few good points there, but the the sort of the platform type of stuff that people are talking about now, and you've probably seen recently the, I've seen like Mike GLC going at link up yeah. over the, 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 so now there's a few, for my opinion on that, it's like, look, if someone's built a platform you know, I'm not saying that they shouldn't give some artists some money, but my point is, if you build a platform, you put in a lot of work, and you know yourself with Nang TV, it it takes a lot of work and a lot of just personal investment um, and just investment overall and time and money, traveling, making connections. Like, you know, yeah. preparation to music videos, right? Yeah, it's not so, easy. Yeah, so what's your thoughts on that? Do you feel that, like, I know now it's a completely different scene to when Link Up came up, but, like, what's your, do you feel that, like, who, which side do you feel is speaking? Yeah. Um, I hear both sides. Um, and I just think there needs to be fairness in it and there needs to be transparency. Mm. Uh, I think if, as an artist, if you're going to these platforms and you're like, oh, can you push me to your fan base, which you've spent so much blood, sweat and tears building, um, you should understand that there has to be some type of like they're monetizing their their audience right so um yeah they, you just have to understand that yeah they they have to make money you have to, they have to be able to sustain themselves in it um but on the flip side of that i think there should definitely should be transparency from the from the what you call it from the platforms yeah. to the artists to let them know that boom this is what we're gonna do with your content? Um, you're you're either gonna get revenue or you're not, or these are what the splits are looking like. Do you know what I mean? There has to be that transparency, so we both know what is happening. Mm-hmm. I think the upset is coming from people paying sometimes to go on these platforms mm-hmm. um, to get views or whatever it is to get a bigger audience, and they're realised. Or I don't I don't know the ins and outs in this. So I don't want to like speculate. Yeah. But what Mike is saying that is that his copyright belongs to somebody else now. Do you know what I mean? Which and that wasn't he wasn't like aware of that. And I understand that, right? So I do see it from both sides. But you know, the um, if you think of like the yeah, the blood, sweat, and tears on building that audience, right? Mm. You know, as an upcoming artist to be featured on Link Up TV, yeah. you know, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a privilege as you're coming up, right? And people will pay to be on those platforms yeah, yeah. because of the reach they can get. So. I, I see both sides and yeah. I understand what Mike's saying is in like, oh, look, I don't even know who owns my copyright no more. But like you said, they do need to 
They need to make money to keep going. Yeah. And it's just like why people, brands pay for influencers to post their stuff on their platform is to, yeah. to get more reach, engagement yeah, absolutely. and awareness, right? Obviously, so. as an artist, you used to be an artist before. Mm. I don't know if you, did you still do music. No, 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 not anymore. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. It's hard though. It's, 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 a, it's a hard grind. You're hard though. Yeah, mate. Yeah. Like, mate it was a, a hard grind, and I find yeah, find a lot about the industry. You know, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. like just after we worked together, mm. went over to the states, then like Miami mm. and stuff, and started to find a lot of stuff out about the industry that wasn't really. Um, not that I, you know, I turned down the the stardom because it wasn't that. It was more of a case of. I don't know, I felt just when you feel like you're getting somewhere, like another big wall comes up in front of you. And I felt like it, that was the thing over and over. So, um, but yeah, it's a, it's a hard industry. Yeah. Um, and also some of the, it's probably a question I was gonna ask you actually is, I started to find as well, especially the American artists, and I've seen it a little bit in the UK artists now, um, a lot of the American artists, um, I felt like they had this like, they're, they're like divas, like they, I don't know, they, they, once they get that bit of awareness and engagement, yeah. like, <laughs> I don't know, the, the stuff they ask for, if you was to book them, yeah, yeah. and it just, it starts to get a little bit out of hand. And then I started to see it in the UK, because I booked a few artists in the UK, mm. and I started to see it there too. Like, you know, the stuff they want, like, I want this on my hotel bed, this, and, mm. this. but it's not like, look, turn up, I want to make sure I have some food for the people yeah. I'm drinking. That's cool, because that's what you're paying for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, some of the stuff, if you if you started to see, because the UK scene has gone crazy, right? Mm. I mean, I think social media has played a massive part, and it's just some of the, the stuff people are doing now, you mm. couldn't even imagine a few years ago. Absolutely, man, it's crazy. Have you seen that in some of the people you work with where, uh, I don't want to put anyone on blast, but I mean, yeah. like, have you seen that sort of the stardom side of stuff really come into it now where you know, they act slightly different. Are you asking me if people that I n like maybe not people you work change. with because it's, it's but yeah. just overall in the scene. You're in the scene. Have you started to see certain people where they're like, look, this person has, has definitely changed. I understand you change yeah. with success and money, and that's not always a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. But have you seen yeah the diva side of stuff? I mean, yeah, like from doing videos, I've definitely seen diva behavior in it do you know what i mean I, I i i feel like i think success and fame bring and money brings out who you really are um so i can't really say people have changed because you must have always been like this you just didn't have the money to yeah. really back that up do you get what i'm saying and some people were like this before the money yeah. um so yeah like I can't really say they've changed, but I've definitely seen that behavior, man. It's not, I don't think it promotes a, a nice environment to work with. It, it, like you're, you're just being difficult, just to be difficult, do you get what I mean? And nobody, you leave the scene, nobody, you leave the, the, the room and no one really has anything good to say about you. Um, but more power to them, man, do you know what I mean? I know, I know what journey I'm on, I know the, the type of like, um, I know how, 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 what kind of legacy I want to leave. Um, but some people don't really care about that stuff. They just want yeah. what they want. Do you know what I mean? And also, you've been in the game yeah. for longer than most of these artists, anyway. So yeah, yeah. You know, some of the people that have blown up in the last two or three years, yeah. often they realise like how long, like people like yourself and others have been yeah. doing this. You know, and yeah. it takes to stay relevant, whether you're an artist or whether you're do, you're behind the scenes. Mm. Regardless, that takes like you have to continue to evolve and grow. Yeah, absolutely. And you need to have a certain thing about you where people want to continue to work with you. So yeah. to still be like, how many years have you been in this game for? Um, so January, would, next January would make me 13 years See, in the industry. Yeah. Um, but people don't really, people don't really respect all of that stuff, man. Like look at, look at Mike GLC, for instance. Like yeah. people are mocking him because of his age and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But there are a lot of, there's a lot of foundation mm. and doors and barriers that this guy has pulled down to be able to allow the new eyes to come and do some of the stuff they're doing and be successful, do you know what I mean? So I think you're only as good as what you did last, man. And I, that that constantly rings in my head, do you feel me? So I always have to keep reinventing myself and making sure that I'm adding to now as opposed to screaming about how long I've been in the industry. And yeah. that matters because obviously that that's an all experience, isn't it? But I think if you if you really want respect, because everything moves so quickly now, yeah. like 
I've done my biggest video this year, but no one cares about that anymore. We're on to the next thing, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, man, you just have to keep moving with the times, really. Yeah. If you want to, like, have longevity, I think. And I agree, like you said about, like, well, Mike, everyone sort of builds these little bridges and then it keeps going. And, yeah. like, him, he was on every, in every city centre. Yeah. So they mixed yeah, yeah. Like teams of people sending no, them facts, too, right? Man. He was even in Luton, bro. I remember <laughs> yeah. he was in Luton shutting CDs, bro. So yeah, bro. mate. So, like, it did open doors. Mm. So you said about the biggest video that you, you did was this year. Yeah. First and foremost, you know, what was what was the video and, you know, where was it shot? And oh, Okay, yeah. so like I've spoken um, earlier on, it was a Clean Bandit video. Yeah. Um, big up Clean Bandit, really like genuine, humble people and, and the amount of success they've had mm. to still maintain that, like, just like all around niceness, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I did something with them last year with Wes Nelson, yeah. the remix for one of their songs, and um, they got me back on and they direct all their videos so jack who's um the the pianist he does all the keys and stuff in the band he he went to film school i think um grace went to film school as well so they produce and direct all their videos and for them to get me on board mm. to shoot and to to direct this piece was like a huge honor for me do you know what i mean yeah. um because the show they, they were like oh we really liked how you and addy my wife worked mm. Um, they said it was like good energy and blah, blah blah. So yeah, man, it was it was it was definitely uh, a humbling experience for me. It was shot in London over three days. We shot at um, what's the name of the studio? Black Island Studio, which is a big like production film house and film studio in the UK. Um, and yeah, man, it was a really powerful, touching story about a guy who life is beating him up and he goes to commit suicide just tries to jump off a building and like this other otherworldly alien saves him do you know what i mean it's all a metaphor for like you don't know who it's basically they, they cross anyway i'll let you guys go and watch yeah, it. yeah go watch Clean Bandit a7s yeah. video it's a beautiful story man and and it got nominated for Ber Ber the berlin music videos award this year didn't win but the fact that it got nominated was great um yeah, man, it's, it's, that's cool. It's, yeah, it's, it's so great. aside from that video, what's yeah. been the favorite w so piece of work that you've done, done outside of that video? What at all time? Of all time, yeah. Your video, man. Ah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I, 